Our final category of computers in the PDP-11 family is comprised of the 1145, 1150, 1155, and the 1170. These medium-scale computers have additional features that are not found on the smaller PDP-11 processors. The features include three processing modes, 16 general purpose registers, a larger instruction set, and seven levels of software interrupts. Let's take a closer look at each of the features that we've listed here. Additional hardware is built into the central processor so that it may be operated at any of three processing modes, kernel mode, supervisor mode or user mode. The supervisor mode is only implemented in the 1145, 1150, 1155 and 1170 computers. Supervisory programs that are operating in this mode can pass control outward to specific user programs. However, programs operating in the supervisor mode cannot pass control inward to the kernel mode except by way of interrupts or traps. Each processing mode, kernel, supervisor, and user, has its own hardware stack in main memory. Whenever a program interrupt occurs, the active hardware stack provides temporary storage for the current program count and processor status. Each processing mode also has its own set of memory management registers. These registers are necessary in order to perform the program relocation and protection functions that we described earlier. Bits 14 and 15 in the processor status word specify which set of memory management registers is active at any given time. As we noted earlier, 16 general purpose registers are implemented in the 1145, 1150, 1155, and 1170. These GPRs are functionally organized as follows. One GPR serves as the program counter or PC. Three other GPRs are used as stack pointers, or SPs. Remember, there are three hardware stacks, and consequently, there must also be three stack pointers. However, only one stack pointer is active at any one time. The 12 remaining GPRs are divided into two sets of six registers each. Each set of registers is available for general use as accumulators, as index registers, or for a variety of other addressing functions. Although there are two sets of general registers, only one set can be active. The active set of registers is designated by bit 11 in the processor status word, or PSW. Because there are two independent sets of registers, the CPU can honor interrupt requests without having to copy the contents of its general registers into another storage area. For example, when an interrupt occurs during program execution, the current PSW is temporarily moved to one of the hardware stacks that is located in main memory. A new PSW is then retrieved and loaded into the central processor. Bit 11 in the new PSW may be used to switch the central processor to the other set of general registers, thereby saving the contents of set 0. After the interrupt has been serviced, the CPU retrieves the old PSW from the hardware stack. The old PSW, in turn, switches the central processor back to set zero of the general registers. In addition to the basic instruction set, 11 new instructions are hardwired into all 1145s, 1150s, 1155s, and 1170s. Included are instructions for executing hardware multiply and divide operations on fixed point numbers. Further expansion of the instruction set is possible by adding a special hardware option called the floating point processor, or FPP. 46 instructions are executed by the floating point processor. Typical floating point instructions include the basic arithmetic operations of add, subtract, multiply and divide, along with operations such as store and compare. Since the FPP is a separate processor, it can operate independently of the central processor. For example, the floating point processor can be executing a floating point add instruction while the CPU is proceeding with non-floating instructions. Interaction between the floating point processor and the central processor is automatically taken care of by the hardware. 
The interrupt structure in 1145, 1150, 1155, and 1170 systems is more sophisticated than the structure that is implemented in the smaller PDP-11 systems. All PDP-11 computers have four hardware interrupt levels. However, only these medium-scale computers have seven software interrupt levels. Because seven levels of software interrupts are provided, programmers can assign different priorities to segments within a program. For example, housekeeping segments can be given lower software priorities so that they will not interfere with more vital system functions such as handling interrupts. We've listed and described those features that are common to all 1145s, 1150s, 1155s, and 1170s. Now, let's look at the major differences between these medium-scale computer systems. Our discussion will cover three areas. The maximum address space, the memory configuration, and the bus structure. In 1145, 1150, and 1155 systems, the memory management unit converts 16-bit addresses to 18 bits. With this expanded 18-bit address, the computer's maximum address space is increased to 128K words. The top 4K of the address space is reserved for registers contained in the I.O. interfaces and the CPU. The remaining addresses may be used to reference word or byte locations in main storage. Consequently, an 1145, 1150, or 1155 system can accommodate up to 124K words of main memory. On the other hand, in 1170 systems, 16-bit addresses are converted to 22 bits by the memory management unit. The expanded 22-bit address results in a maximum address space of over 2 million words. This space is organized as follows. The top 128K of the address space is reserved for Unibus addresses. The balance of the 1170's address space can then be used for main memory. Because of its large address space, an 1170 system can accommodate over 1.9 million words of main storage. By comparison, the maximum memory size in an 1145 system is 124K words. 1170 systems differ from the 1145, 50, and 55 in two other key areas, the memory configuration and the bus structure. Main storage in 1145, 1150, and 1155 systems can be configured using three different types of memories. Non-volatile core memory with a typical cycle time of 900 nanoseconds, solid state MOS memory with a cycle time of approximately 500 nanoseconds, and solid state bipolar memory with a cycle time of 300 nanoseconds. A system may utilize just one of these memory types or a mixture of core, MOS, and bipolar memory. When core memory is used in any of these systems, it attaches directly to the PDP-11 Unibus. On the other hand, MOS and bipolar memories are connected to an internal fast bus in addition to the Unibus. This fast bus is unique to the 1145, 1150, and 1155. It provides a separate data path between the CPU and solid state memory. This dual bus structure increases system throughput. For example, the central processor can be fetching and executing instructions from solid state memory, while at the same time a data transfer is taking place between core memory and an I.O. device. Let's compare this arrangement to the bus structure and memory configuration used in the 1170 system. In the 1170 system, main storage is functionally organized into two elements, core memory, which can be expanded to a maximum capacity of over 1.9 million words, and bipolar cache memory with a storage capacity of 1,024 words. Cache memory is a very fast storage element that maintains a copy of selected portions of core memory, thus providing faster access to instructions and data. Because of its bipolar construction, the cycle time for cache memory is 240 nanoseconds, compared to a typical cycle time of 950 nanoseconds for core memory. When the computer needs to retrieve information from main storage, it first looks in cache memory. If the information resides in cache, it is retrieved, and slower core memory is not accessed. 
On the other hand, if the information is not resident in cache memory, the computer must access core memory. After four bytes are copied into cache memory, the word or byte that was requested is sent to the central processor. Because programs tend to use localized sections of code, information is likely to be in cache memory when the CPU needs it. For example, while the central processor is executing a program loop, all of the accompanying instructions may be resident in cache memory. Since it takes less time to retrieve these instructions from cache memory, the 1170 will execute its program faster. Program execution slows down only when data or instructions must be retrieved from the slower core memory. Thus, in an 1170 system, the effective or overall cycle time with cache memory is 400 nanoseconds. Three buses are used in the 1170 system. The PDP-11 Unibus, a DMA bus, and a memory bus. The Unibus functions as the system's primary control path. It also handles data transfers that involve low-speed peripheral devices, such as a teleprinter or paper tape unit. The DMA bus is a separate data path between main memory and mass storage devices, such as disks or magnetic tape units. This data path is 32 bits wide. All data transfers that take place over the DMA bus are managed by high-speed I.O. controllers. These controllers operate independently of the central processor, thereby increasing system throughput. Data is exchanged between the I.O. controller and its associated peripheral device as two 16-bit words. The I.O. controller, in turn, sends and receives data over the DMA bus as one 32-bit word. Although the Unibus does not handle the actual DMA transfer, it does play a secondary role with respect to the high-speed I.O. controllers. Specifically, the Unibus transmits status and control information to or from the controller. It also carries interrupt requests back to the CPU. Up to four high-speed I.O. controllers can be implemented in an 1170 system. Pre-wired slots are provided on the CPU backplane assembly to accommodate these four controllers. The third bus in the 1170 system is the memory bus. It is a 32-bit wide data path connecting cache memory and core memory. This allows four bytes to be transferred in parallel between these two memory elements. Cache memory in turn connects with the CPU over an internal data path. When a device on the Unibus wishes to communicate with main memory, it is necessary to convert 18-bit Unibus addresses into their corresponding 22-bit memory addresses. This conversion is performed by a special hardware unit called the Unibus Map. The Unibus Map is enabled or disabled under program control. When it is disabled, each incoming 18-bit address has four leading zeros added for referencing main memory. This completes our discussion of the 1145, 1150, 1155, and 1170 systems. Before going on to your workbook, let's review the major features that are incorporated in these medium-scale PDP-11 computers. Each computer has three processing modes, 16 general-purpose registers, seven software interrupt levels, and four levels of hardware interrupts. In 1145, 1150, and 1155 systems, the maximum address space is 128K words. By comparison, the 1170 uses a 22-bit address that expands the address space to over 2 million words. Main storage in 1145, 50, and 55 systems is configured using core, MOS, and bipolar memories. These memories can be used either singly or in various combinations. On the other hand, in the 1170, main storage is divided into two elements, core memory for a large storage capacity and bipolar cache memory for extremely fast access. Finally, the 1145, 50, and 55 systems incorporate a dual bus structure consisting of the PDP-11 unibus and a fast bus. In the 1170, three buses are used. The Unibus, a 32-bit DMA bus, and a 32-bit memory bus.
This concludes the audiovisual portion of the study book. You should now refer to the review material and exercises provided in your workbook.